Okay. What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Bitcoin is still kind of hanging around that $23,000 area, dipping a little bit below it, trying to break above it, right? Nothing really exciting. Now, as we go into the weekend, we do know that weekends can get a little bit volatile, right? And I don't usually take the weekend price action too seriously. We often tend to come back down to the CME futures close. But I do want to point out that even though this is a red candle, we are still in fact above the 200 weekly moving average, which is sitting at around $22,877. So if we do close this week out above that, that would actually be two consecutive weeks of Bitcoin closing above the 200 weekly moving average, which could seriously signal that the ultimate bottom has been put in. Now, before we get into that just, uh, you know, topic, I do want to actually go over a very compelling Bitcoin fractal. This is not my fractal. It's actually someone else's. And if you look at what's happening right now, it actually could give us clues as to where Bitcoin could be heading in the short term. And I also want to talk about Bitcoin dominance because for everyone out there who's been asking me, have altcoins actually bottomed? Should I be cycling back into the altcoins now? Well, if we have a look at the Bitcoin dominance chart, that might be a possibility. So I want to talk about that. I also want to go over massive news, probably some of the biggest news right now that not a lot of people are talking about, but I think this is absolutely huge. If you're a Bitcoin holder, if you're a crypto holder, if you're worried about the longevity of the space and whether or not, you know, things are going to turn around soon, well, this could be the news that we were all waiting for. And finally, I do want to discuss the fact that regulation is in fact coming, but I'm going to let you guys know why it could actually take multiple multiple years to really get this regulation because of some internal conflicts happening, you know, with the uh, the U.S. government and the systems that we have put into place. So if that sounds good to you guys, this is the weekend version of the Crypto Zombie Entertainment Channel. You guys know how Fridays go. They're kind of like, eh, because you go into the weekend and then we get that crazy trading volume. But if you're not subscribed, get subscribed because we are going to talk about what is happening. And if I see anything important, turn on that bell notification so you can be notified right away. So let's dive in and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. You can see right here, I'm not going to spend too much time on TA because not much has changed, but I will just let you know what I'm looking at. We are still holding above this 50 moving average on the monthly, which is very, very good. We do still have the RSI sitting around 43.8. We want it to get up to 50. Once it gets up to 50, that's usually a good reversal signal. We don't have that yet, and we are still being held down by the EMA ribbon. So, you know, we do have some things that are playing out. We are above the 50. We are above the 200 weekly. We're not in the hash ribbon yet. We don't have the RSI, right? So we got we got two out of four. We're halfway there, you know, as far as these indicators are concerned. But nevertheless, you could see we are, in fact, still putting in higher highs and higher lows. And actually, in my previous video, I told you guys right here would be the level. And I mean, we once again, guys, just throwing it out there, pretty much perfectly exactly hit the level at around $22,495. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't fall down low. Remember, we still have this heart line. So there was that possibility that we do get that rejection at 24,000, maybe come down here to retest around $20,900 before continuing to the upside. I still have my target. My next target is this upward sloping spider line right here. So anywhere between 25,000 and 25,700 would be my first target target. And I do believe that we would max out at around 26,626 before then having a major pullback. If you guys want to trade these moves with me, make sure that you check out the tutorial popping up above. And if you want over $6,800 in bonuses, make sure that you use the specific link below in the description. But I did just want to talk about this fractal that Trader Tardigrade pointed out. So basically, we have now that, you know, obviously fractals aren't exactly perfect when it comes to time, but you could see right here, We've had this sort of rounded bottom and then this overextended top with this trend line down right here. And if you could see, very similar to what we had in 2018, this took 30 days, this took 30 days. Once we got back above that trend, we started a slow grind into essentially the beginning of the next bull run. And if we come down here, we have 17 bars, so they're exactly equal. Same thing, right? We dipped below, we came above, and now we're trading or attempting to break out of that line again. So is that possible? He says, pullback finished, bull run continues. So we'll have to see. But I did say that I was anticipating at least 
potentially two months of bullish price action leading into the FOMC meeting again upcoming this September. Now, you can see right here that we are having the S&P hitting the resistance, right? Right here, this is a big level. We really need to get above 41.55 for the S&P. And also the DXY, you could see, was attempting to pump back up again. But as we pointed out a while ago, it does potentially appear that we are breaking this parabolic trend for the DXY, and that could signal it might be the end for the dollar's little mini bull run that we had, right? The one that started back here in June of last year. Everything has a beginning and everything has an end, right, guys? Now, Ultimately, as I said, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to harp too much on the TA. I do want to get to the important part of this video, but you can see that we are still being held down essentially by the center area right here. Although we have flipped it into support, we haven't had any major moves yet. So we still need to get above this blue zone and we need to break above that sort of Terra Luna little wick that we had, right? And depending on what exchange you're looking at, that's between 25,002 and 26,006. So let's just say we need to get above 26,600. Let's just say that, right? And then that would sort of cover all of the exchanges. And if we could break above that, that will be flipping some very, very important, uh, you know, resistance potentially into support, or at least a significant level to pay attention to. Still grinding up here. We did hit the bottom of the CME futures right here, blue zone. And I still have my target up here to close the CME futures gap. You can see right here, we have a gap. There is no candle in there. So that potentially says that we should potentially, you know, by the end of this run, go up to that $28,800 level. So like I said, guys, if you are looking to trade, check out uh, BitGet and also check out my tutorial on BitGet popping up above. As I said, not to brag, I think it's the best one on the internet, but you do you. We go over everything from beginner to expert. Uh, you know, we go over risk management, how to trade profitably and responsibly. So I highly, highly recommend that. Like I said, I do think we're going to have a big breakout soon. Um, but actually, before we get into any more of the content for this video, uh, did you guys happen to see this interview that Craig Wright did? Uh, by the way, if you don't know who Craig Wright is, this guy, he uh, claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto. If you think he's Satoshi Nakamoto, then I don't know what to tell you. I can't help you because he cannot prove any evidence. He can't move any coins. He literally just says he's Satoshi, but he can't prove anything. But I just wanted to play this clip. Uh, had me cracking up this morning. What do you Let's have a law book and look what proof is and do a course. And when you come back and you actually know what the f you're talking about, we can have a discussion. Well, why get irritated? Otherwise, you're just being a wanker. Why get irritated and, and start swearing? I'm Australian. And if you're going to be a wanker, I'll call you a wanker. Craig Wright, everyone, the man who allegedly claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, judging by the way this man acts in public, and in interviews versus just simply reading the Bitcoin white paper and looking at how Satoshi would type on these early forums. I'm not thinking, uh, I'm not thinking this is Satoshi guys, but you know what, whatever you think, let's get back to Bitcoin. So I wanted to talk about some interesting data from Glassnode. Now this shows you that there are massive hodlers taking a huge position right now in Bitcoin. They are refusing to sell at any price. I'm one of those. There, there's, there's some Bitcoin that I actually may never sell. Honestly, that's how much, that's how much I will hold Bitcoin probably most likely forever. But according to this data from Glassnode, over 65% of Bitcoin circulating supply or around 12.3 5 million Bitcoin has not moved in at least a year. There's a significant increase from the supply that hasn't been active in at least two years and an even more considerable increase from the supply that hasn't been active in at least three years. So data also shows that 8.55 million Bitcoin, about 45% of the circulating supply has not moved in two years and 7.22 million, about 38% of the supply has not moved in three years. And if you want to zoom out even farther, they say that 4.37 million Bitcoin or about 23% has not moved in five years years. So there are some serious hodlers out there. Now I know what you're saying. Oh, well, maybe they lost their keys or they forgot about it. Okay, guys, but even if we just go back five years ago, you know, going back to like 2017, 2018 era, those were not ignorant crypto people. Those are not people that did not understand not your keys, not your coins. People that lost their coins on exchanges or forgot about them. That's like 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, you know, that kind of crowd. 2017 and up, Everybody knows about Ledger Nano S's. Everybody knows about cold storage, saving your private keys. You know, So I think that this data is showing us that there are a lot of hardcore hodlers in the space that are not willing 
essentially to sell their Bitcoin, especially at these levels. So that's good news for Bitcoin. Now, I do want to talk about the altcoins. Lots of people have been asking me, is it time to buy altcoins? Now, you can see right here, the total crypto market cap is in fact hitting this previous uh, you know, breakdown line, which actually, not to be whatever, but if you actually look at this fractal that tar uh, Trader Tardigrade had pointed out, you can see that not only is Bitcoin doing something like this, but we also have, you, you know, Bitcoin doing it again in the fractal and the overall crypto space appears to be doing that as well. You can kind of see, you know, we have this sort of upwards down and then boom, we're looking for that breakout. So, you know, if we do get something similar like this on the total cap for crypto, which is in fact holding above the 200 weekly, actually much better than Bitcoin and altcoins alone, could say that we could be due for a potential altcoin rally, right? Another reason is that we're starting to see that bottoming at this pre previous resistance. Uh, and if we're just having a look at the Bitcoin dominance alone, this level has been very, very important, uh, you know, for historical trends. And if I actually, oops, didn't mean to move that. Sorry, guys, if I zoom in here, you know, look at this right here, you can actually see that we're starting to sort of break below this line right here. Now you could say, oh, well, we fell below before. Okay, yeah, we have had fake outs like back here, right? But uh, usually what, what does happen is Bitcoin tends to rally against the altcoins. It's Typically, that's what happens. But if on the off chance, we come down here, hit this as resistance, and then start coming down, you're going to see a massive altcoin rally. And why else am I also looking at this potentially? Well, I'm looking at Ethereum specifically. I believe Ethereum uh, to be the number one altcoin, right? Even though I think at this point, Ethereum sh should just be Ethereum. It shouldn't even be an altcoin. It should just be its own thing. But if you look at Ethereum as the leader of the altcoins, you can see that Ethereum is also making an attempt to break out on this legacy Bitcoin resistance, right? Where we've had these multiple points of resistance, multiple points of support, and now we are in fact consolidating. So if we do break above that, that could signal the beginning of the big moves for altcoins. Now, let's talk about the big news, guys. You may have seen this, you may have not seen this, but we have BlackRock and Coinbase entering into a deal. Now, I'm not a big Coinbase fan. You know, they kick me off the exchange. They have terrible customer service. But that being said, BlackRock, which is the world's largest asset manager, is going to offer its institutional clients access to crypto through a deal with exchange giant Coinbase. Now, I know a lot of people have been waiting for that spot ETF. We're probably not going to get it anytime soon. But if there were any of these skeptical institutional investors that have yet to dip their toes in the water and want to buy Bitcoin at a 60 plus percent discount at current prices, and they want to do it through BlackRock, who manages $9 trillion under management, then yeah, now would be the time for these guys to jump in. And just to put that into perspective, BlackRock manages $9 trillion for their of customer funds, okay? The entire market cap of all cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and every altcoin right now is just slightly sitting above $1 trillion. So BlackRock manages about nine times more customer funds than the entire crypto market cap of all the cryptos in existence right now. Just to break that down, that's massive, guys. That is a lot of potential money that could come in. And now having an opportunity to use the asset manager's Aladdin portfolio management software, they will soon be able to get direct access to crypto through the partnership. Initially, it's going to be Bitcoin first. No surprise. And then, you know, they'll start introducing Ethereum, maybe some others. So Coinbase's prime product will give Aladdin clients access to crypto trading, custody, prime brokerage, and reporting capabilities. Speaking about the announcement, BlackRock's global head of strategic uh, ecosystem partnerships, Joseph Chalam, said that the firm's clients are increasingly interested in getting exposure to digital asset markets. He says this connectivity will allow clients to manage their Bitcoin exposure directly in their existing portfolio management and trading workflows for a whole portfolio view of risk across asset classes. So this could be major. This could be the next big floodgates opening. The world's largest asset manager now allowing direct access for their clients to Bitcoin and having them able to be able to track it through their portfolio management system, Aladdin. I think this is crazy. I think this is huge. Uh, I don't think enough people are talking about this. And uh, yeah, I think now's the time to maybe start accumulating your Bitcoin because these guys are most likely going to probably, uh, 
you know, who knows, probably start accumulating as well. Or uh, definitely their clients may if they start offering it. So you could see a little bit of li liquidity crisis coming in, uh, you know, soon. And we could see Bitcoin really start to move. Um, I do just want to end on one more thing. Not that it's a big deal, but a lot. Well, it is a big deal, actually. A lot of people are concerned about this crypto regulation and you have Coinbase and recently, you know, they had the insider trading and all that. So they're not the only exchange that the SEC is looking at. So according to a staffer from Senator Cynthia Lummis's office, uh, this was on a Thursday report. They claim that the U.S. financial regulator is probing Binance and every U.S. cryptocurrency exchange. So eventually they're going to go to all of them. According to the source, the SEC is looking to establish itself as the country's chief crypto regulator as it continues battle with the U.S. Uh, CFTC. Now, the SEC hasn't stopped with Coinbase since the insider trading filing. Gensler has gone on record to say that he doesn't see a difference between crypto exchanges and traditional stock trading venues, adding that there is inherent conflicts of interest with exchanges that act as market makers. But hear this. This week, the Senate Agriculture Committee introduced the Digital Commodities Consumer Protection Act. If passed, the new bill would see Bitcoin and Ethereum classified as commodities, and that would give the CFTC oversight of exchanges that list them for trading. So we know Bitcoin is probably already definitely 100%, you know, commodity, same thing with Ethereum, but these guys are going to be duking it out. They're going to be battling over what's an unregistered security, what's a commodity, which, you know, what do we regulate? What do you regulate? And honestly, I could see this battle going on for a few years. And because of that, I don't think we're going to get any clear crypto regulation anytime soon. It might still take another two years before we truly get out of that wild, wild west for the US. Two completely different regulators duking it out. So that's that, guys. That's where I want to end today's video. But yeah, ultimately, we are going into the weekend. Weekend price action can get a little crazy. But thanks again for coming back to the channel. I do think, though, that this BlackRock news is absolutely huge. It's just another avenue, another asset. It's just something to just make the machine, grease it, oil it, make it work smoother, get more people involved, right? Uh, well, there was that thing that came out a few months ago, and one of the things that people were complaining the most about in the poll was the difficulty to, uh, you know, get into crypto, the um, the learning curve, right? They said it's not as frictionless as they had hoped, even though I find it quite easy to make an account and buy crypto. But I guess for some people, it's just too scary. It's just too much risk. So this could be very, very good for all of these people, the $9 trillion in assets under management that BlackRock is taking care of right now. Definitely big news. Thumbs up on that. That's got to be some bullish news right now. I know it's been boring, but this is very, very big. Although I'm sure somebody will find a reason for why this is bad news. But look, guys, take it with a grain of salt. You want adoption, this is how you get adoption. The big guys, they come in, right? That's what happens. That's how you get adoption. If not, then, you know, we just go back to cypherpunk libertarianism and P2P exchanges. So that is it for me, guys. Thank you for coming back to the channel. Of course, if you do want to trade on BitGet, I highly, highly recommend it. If you want to get that $6,888 bonus, use the link below. Also, check out my tutorial that I did on BitGet, which is about to be popping up right here, right now. Until next time, guys, have an awesome start to your weekend. I will try to make some updates. Do stick around. I love you. Get subscribed. We're going to have some fun upcoming times. Just got to break through some of those major trend lines, and I think it could be fireworks for Bitcoin. So get subscribed if you do want those updates. Be careful. Like I said, the weekend price action could get a little bit crazy. Could, you know, really, you know how it is, man. We have like $2,000 moves over the weekend and then just end up at the exact same level come Monday. So uh, be careful if you are trading on the weekend, uh, lower volume, lower liquidity. But that being said, that is it for me, guys. I am done. Thank you for coming back to the channel. You guys, as you know, are literally the actual reason that I make these videos because why would I make these videos if nobody was watching them, right? So I really appreciate it. Uh, and, I, and I am looking forward to some more crypto conferences. Uh, if you guys are going to any, let me know. I always love to come out and meet some of you. Um, you know, we did the one in Miami. Uh, I was out in Dubai before. And, uh, you know, I think they have one maybe coming up in uh, Vegas and then maybe another one in, in uh, Cali, I think at some point. So let me know. Maybe we'll get up. But that's it for me, guys. Make sure that you watch this video popping up right here, right now. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out. Thank <laughs> you.